Hello there, my mate Vince here, and in this video today we're looking at a Grandstand Astro Wars. It's a little tabletop game from the 1980s. Now, I purchased it from eBay for only £34, plus £4 something postage. Obviously, it's faulty, but if we can get it working, it would be quite a cheap Astro Wars, especially because it comes in the box, and also it has got its battery cover as well. So let's pop some batteries in just to verify that it isn't working and then we'll try and fix it well i've got batteries in and it's not making any sounds there's nothing coming up on the screen it's completely dead there is a little bit of corrosion just under the spring here so let's bring it over to matt and see if we've got voltage on the terminals you can see it's been cleaned here because there's some scratch marks and i can see a little bit of brown so obviously there has been a battery leak right so it goes from here through here, it's connected here, and back through here again. So the springs will be okay if we get a reading here, which we do, you can see six volts there. So yeah, although the springs have got a bit of corrosion on, they're not gonna be actually affecting anything. But I will give them a little bit of a clean up later. All right, let's get the thing apart and see what's, uh, see what's happening. Now I've already done a couple of these in the past. And from memory, I was successful on both attempts. So hopefully this third time will go just as well. Now in order to get into this, there's just seven screws at the bottom. They're just crosshead screws. And then the top separates from the bottom. On this particular one, it took a little bit of prying to get the top off, but it all goes smoothly enough. Well, here we go. Let's undo these ones as well. Luckily for me, the getter here is still black. So I think the VFD display is okay because this is a lovely display. This is a vacuum fluorescent display, which they're just beautiful. So if there was a crack or something in it, I think that goes a more whitish color because of all the impurities in, in there. So uh, I think the display is going to be all right. Right, so we've got the positive and the negative here. Can you see the red wire and the black wire? They go down to this switch first of all. So it could be that the switch has failed because the idea is when you put a power jack in here, it powers the machine, but then it cuts the connection going back to the battery, so you're not putting power into the battery. Sometimes what happens is they get dirty in here and they no longer connect the wire through. When you unplug the power adapter, it should join up, for example, I, I don't know if it's gonna be the black wire or the red wire, but it should join them up to here. That might not be happening. So let's pop some batteries back in and we'll see whether we're getting voltage at the board or not. And that's a little piezo buzzer here for the sound. So let's go to volts DC and see we're going to have where it comes to here. So we're going to have it here and here. Oh, so it's the red wire that is breaking because the black wire is joined up anyway. So you can see six volts there. But now is it coming through the red, the red wire? Yes, it is. So we have got six volts going onto the board here. Yeah, so we do have six volts going into it. Right, so then it goes from here. Around here, around here, around here to the power button. Can you see the six volts here on the red? Goes around to the power button. So we're gonna have it going from here to here. And then when you short the power button, it's gonna bring it round and it's gonna go up here through that ribbon cable into the board. So let's short up that now with this here. You can see it just bridges these two points. And I wonder is anything getting warm? So we should have it now going up here. So let's check that. 
There we go, six volts. So we've definitely got six volts going up into uh, this section, and I presume it goes okay on the ribbon cable up through here. Let's see if we can take this uh, take this out. Got to be careful of this screen. Now, does it all look okay? Ribbon cable comes up here. Let's just follow the six volts. So we know six volts on this one here. Let's zoom in, and we'll follow the six volts coming up from here. So the six volts is on this wire here, which is here. Where do you go? You go up to here, which is this sort of weird transformer thing, here. Right, and then it goes up here, around here. Do you know what? From memory, I think it was this one that failed before, this... Uh, Little transistor here. I think these are prone to go in. Right, I'm going to get my thermal cam out and I'm going to see if anything is heating up. So I'm going to short the power button here and let's see if we have any heat. Okay, so shorten the power button now. That means we've got six volts going into it. Do we have anything getting hot? Oh, that looks hot down here. What's that? No, I think that's just a reflection. Yeah, because when I take the power off, it makes no difference. Right, well, we don't have anything... We don't have anything heating up, do we? No, there's no heat there. That's just a reflection. Yes, yeah, so there's nothing happening there. Right, okay. Right, let's take the batteries out. And we'll have a look at that little transistor. So I'm on diode test. I'm just going to put the black lead in the middle to begin with. Just going to see. So we've got a short there. Not there. Let's swap the leads over. So we've still got a short there. Okay. Nothing there. Let's go that way. Short. Short. That already, I think, is probably not right. I think these two legs here look like they're shorting together. So if we were to go to ohms. And you see there we have a three ohm short. Let's pop that transistor out and let's see if that's uh, if that's failed. I'm just going to get my desolder station on the go. Now this is all coming out lovely and easy because it's uh, it's leaded solder. Right, so we'll uh, we'll test that one. Now I'm just going to measure this one here because you can see that one of the pins that are shorted, so the voltage comes into here, 6 volts, and then it's shorted to this one here. So we're going to have 6 volts going straight up into this one. Uh, where does the other side go? The other side goes here and all up here. Yeah, let me just measure measure this one here. So if we've got six volts permanently here, it's not switching, is it? You think it's when it's told to turn on that it will put six volts to here, but I'm not sure where the kind of base collector emitter or whatever it is on that one. Let's go to diode test again. I just want to check this component here. So we're short there. Okay. Right, so we've got a short there again, haven't we? I wonder did this thing blow that then took that one out? Because we've got we've got a short between the base and the collector. Let's pop this one out as well. Luckily I can tell here which way the transistor goes because the board's marked up and I've just got to make sure that the, uh, the, 
the writing is going up the top and then I know which way to put this one back. Let's just quickly check the board now that they're out, make sure the shorts have gone. Yes, there's no short there now, and there's no short there, yeah? Right, so that means that we're still gonna have a short on here. No, we haven't got a short there. So was this thing putting a short down back onto here? One second now. That goes in that way. So it means these two legs should be the ones that are shorting. No, short's not there. Now this was facing up this way. So it was these two legs that were shorting. Yeah, we got a short there. I think it's this here that's failed. And it must have been putting a short back down onto the transistor. Let's put it in the component test and see what it's saying. So this is C945. And it's saying it's an NPN transistor. I'm just gonna Google that. Yeah, and if I look here, I can see it says NPN transistors. So uh, yeah, NPN. Well, I think that's okay. Now, let's see what you're reading. A resistor, right, okay. A 0.47 ohm resistor, so near enough a direct short. And when I put it in the other way, the fault goes there. I'm pretty sure that this is faulty. So this is a D882. I'm sure I would have bought them years ago when I was doing the other ones. Let me see if I've got any. You know, having the spares is just the best feeling in the world. It's so nice and not just one, multiple. So even if I put this in and it burns out, it doesn't matter, because I've got another three here. So I think before I must have bought a pack of 10 of these and five of these, I don't think they're expensive, as in I think they're a few pound for like five of them and they're gonna be even less, so that's great news. Right, let's uh, pop one of these in here just to make sure it's not reading the resistor. Brilliant, MPN, there you go. So it's not reading a resistor. So that's good news. Actually, let's see, where, where are we? One, two, three. Let's see where the base collector emitter is. So one is the base, so the left leg's gonna be base. Is that correct here? Yeah, base. And number two is the collector. Yes, collector, number two. And number three is this leg here, and that's the emitter. Brilliant, so we now know, even if we forgot where it went here, we could just mimic that on here. Right, so I'm gonna pop that one in there. Let's see if this is reading the same as these ones, just in case it's kind of slightly blown one of these transistors. Right, so flat side facing me. And we've got base collector emitter, and then we'll worry about these in a minute. That's base collector emitter. Let's just see if that's gonna be reading the same. Flat side facing me. Base collector emitter, yeah, good. Now, HFE 194, and then 696. 194, 696. 194, 696. 19469. So this is very similar, but that isn't. I don't know what that means. Let me Google that to see what it actually means. Okay, it's to do with the amplification of the transistor. And this is a website called uh, Learning About Electronics. So uh, learningaboutelectronics.com. And it says here that HFE of a transistor is the current gain or amplification factor of a transistor is it's the factor by with the, which the base current is amplified to produce the amplified current of the transistor. So what is amplified, it goes through the collector and emitter terminals. So it's unamplified into the base and then it gets amplified 
which flows through the collector and the emitter. So if this is lower than one of the new ones, maybe this isn't amplifying it enough. I'll tell you what, because I've got loads of them, I reckon it probably would work with that. For all I know, that might be a better one because maybe the older components are made better than the newer ones. But let's pop a new one of these in and this one in as well and hopefully this might come to life just in case this isn't quite amplifying it enough because maybe the short in here has affected this transistor i think that's what happened to me before i think i swapped one of these out and it still got incredibly hot because it was the transistor before that had failed so uh, yeah let's change them both out now if you think about how many of these exist worldwide, think about how many of these must have the same fault as this one here. I've done three of them and I've got two of them that had these faulty components. So we had Grandstand Astro Wars in the UK, I think in Japan it was also called Astro Wars but made by Epoch and I think that's how you pronounce it and I think it was also known as Super Galaxian and I think in America these were known as Galaxy 2. They're all the same thing with just slightly different wording to what fits the market so imagine if you could come up with something like this which could sell worldwide just change the branding in a few countries and yet it's the same thing and these things would not have been cheap back in the day they would have been quite pricey so you know you'd be lucky to get one for christmas or birthday and there we go so you can see it's soldered there and soldered here and that's it there and that's it there i'm not going to add any IPA to it because this whole board has like a conformal coating type thing on and it's just going to get stickier and stickier and horrible so I'm just going to leave it and uh, hopefully it will all be good. Right so let's pop the batteries in, short this up and see if we have any sounds and we can put it back together. Let me just quickly clean these up. Really don't need my grinding pen on them for a couple of seconds, but that's still in the car. I think when they get crushed down, I think maybe some of the other rings might be touching the uh, the batteries anyway. So even if the, the very last one isn't doing it, maybe it's touching it on the other ones. We had uh, voltage there before, didn't we? Right now, are you going to show any signs of life? Let's see. You ready? Here goes. Fantastic. Yes, and I can see. I can see stuff there. Result. Okay, let's uh, let's pop this back together and end on a bit of gameplay. Okay, so here it all is. In the box there were some instructions and a little warranty card as well. So overall, it's in pretty good condition. Obviously it's not mint, but it has got the box. I think you could easily double your money on something like this, having a quick look on eBay. And there's many of them that's going for around 70, 80, 100 pound, and then upwards of 100 to 200 pound, depending on the condition of the box. So I think it would be very believable to get you know around about 80 pound for this which is good because i checked out the price of these components so 100 percent this here was the faulty component and it's one pound 59 delivered in the uk so you can see the seller's not going to make much money on that by the time they post it but if you want more of them you can pay three pound 42 and get 10 of them for Ch from china and that's delivered and when it comes to these little transistors here which i don't think in this case it was actually faulty i swapped it out because of the hfe but i think this would have been working fine and you get from a uk seller one pound 59 for 10 of them so you can see that the components are very very cheap which is always nice now let's finish with a bit of gameplay and hopefully if you've had one of these the sound of it will certainly bring back memories start Right, so it's moving left and right, okay. Oh, that's annoying. I'm not doing very good.
Ah, there we go. At least I got through that round. So uh, there we have it. Oh, hold on one second. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fast forward because there's a bit where you have to do the landing thing. And I just want to uh, do that for, from uh, memory because uh, it's quite nice. Here we go. Right, what do I have to do here again? Oh, I've got a good, it said. Can't remember what I have to do. Oh, you do that to uh, slow down the descent. Uh oh. Nearly out of time. Look at that, the skill. Fantastic. Well, there we have it, a nice, simple fix. But something like this is well worth fixing. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching.